Hello, everyone. Hi again. In our last segment, Ray was at the end of page 467 in In Search of Christian Freedom. And he was asking, how did the watchtower get away with continually lambasting the clergy of Christendom, calling Christendom generally apostate, and yet using the reference works continually to buttress their own teachings where possible, buttress mm -hmm. their own authority where possible. By and the reason they get away with it is they... Disguise the source by they, calling them Bible scholars instead of clergy of Christendom. Yeah, and we make the point in the description of the last video that by far the majority of Bible commentators and the authors of reference works that are used by the Watchtower and everybody else in the world when it comes to the teachings of the Bible, by far the majority are either by clergy, mm. written by clergy, or by the seminary professors who teach the clergy, many of whom themselves are clergy. Books produced by Christian publishers. Christian publishers, yeah, but you never see this acknowledged. So Ray mm -hmm. talks about the hypocrisy of that, and in this segment he's addressing the number 144,000 this unique teaching of the Watchtower, the literalness of 144,000, and he actually does the math for us. He starts by saying the attempt is soon made to place the reader on the horns of a false dilemma by saying that this teaching, that is the teaching about the other sheep, disagrees with other Bible scriptures bearing on the subject. But this statement is mere assertion and is without foundation. Let us assume for the sake of argument that all the other teachings of the organization about the literalness of the number 144,000, about others outside that number being destined for life in an earthly paradise, about the sheep in the parable of the sheep and goats as relating to those who will live in the earthly paradise. Let us assume that all this is correct. How does that in any way argue against Jesus having referred to the Gentiles in the text under discussion, John 10, 16. It simply does not. Is it not true that the converts among the Gentiles did in fact become united with the Jewish Christians as one flock under one shepherd? Whether the teachings of the organization about an earthly class are true or not would not change this fact in the least, would it? Since such listening to the voice of Jesus by Gentiles and their being joined to the flock of Jewish Christians did actually occur, what prevents Jesus' illustration from applying in that way? What just reason is there for attempting to force a confrontation between such biblical understanding and the teachings of the organization? about an earthly class and an earthly paradise, when no such confrontation or opposition is required. If the argument were solid and rested on sound scriptural evidence, there would be no need for the writer of the article to resort to the use of a false dilemma. The Watchtower's argumentation is not, neither fair nor factual. The following paragraph suggests to the reader what John could well have called to mind when writing down Jesus' words. Having referred to the parable of the sheep and the goats at Matthew 25, it says, quote, The Apostle John was acquainted with that parable, for he and his brother James, and also Peter and Andrew, were the ones who promoted Jesus' prophecies, prophecy rather, by asking him privately about the sign. And John heard that prophecy in full. So, when he recorded Jesus' words about the other sheep, he could well have called to mind Jesus' parable about the sheep and the goats. He was the aged apostle who was given the revelation that disclosed that the twelve tribes of spiritual Israel would contain only 144,000 members. So he knew that the sheepfold containing the little flock would enfold only a limited number of all those saved. End of quote. This attempt by the writer of the article at what amounts to mind reading proves nothing. It is also pointless since the words at John 10:16 did not originate with John's thinking, but with that of Jesus. The statement also presumes that John understood the 144,000 in Revelation as the Watchtower organization understands it. Once again, the writer argues by use of circular reasoning. 
Perhaps the most interesting feature of the articles is the picture drawn to portray in graphic form the Watchtower interpretation of the text. And then he has uh, an illustration right in the book from, from the Watchtower of uh, uh, two sheep groups, a pen with a few sheep in it, and then all these other sheep outside the pen. And I, right away, when I just looked at it, I noticed when it describes what each one of these is, the ones in the pen, it says, the sheep in this fold, the little flock, from Jews and Gentiles. Well, that, that doesn't make any sense, given Jesus is saying this to his disciples. They're living in a time when the Gentiles are not regarded as of any importance. So he's not talking about this, the Gentiles being in there. Plus, the, the listeners, the, the disciples, they would have already recognized from their readings of the Old Testament or their hearing of the Old Testament that they are considered Jehovah's flock. Yeah. And he is their shepherd. So they, they would not have been, you know, they would not have thought of this the way the Watchtower does. Not at all. And that's exactly the contextual reading that is the reason that the churches of Christendom have always believed that the other sheep are Gentiles. Yeah. And if he was talking about that, that would have been noticed and it would have been revolutionary to the to the disciples. So, what? so this understanding combined with the idea of the 144,000 from Revelation, mm -hmm. the unique teachings of the Watchtower, again, are violating the context. Mm -hmm. And therefore you're resting when you have that faith in these yeah. interpretations. You're resting on the authority of the Watchtower alone. Yeah. You're assuming they think like the Watchtower does. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rather than on the consensus yeah. of the scholars that are out there, they're too often cited by the Watchtower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now Ray goes into the analysis of this Jehovah's arrangement for his sheep, which is the title of this diagram they have on the page. Although this is admittedly only an artist's sketch, the concept of the scene conveys designed to harmonize with the organization's teachings is almost con incredible. Here is de depicted an Israelite shepherd with seven sheep by count, protected in a pen, and 50 others by count left loose outside and without the protection of the pen, or any pen you could say. What shepherd in any time of history, in any race, in any country of the world, would have such an <coughs> arrangement of his sheep? What shepherd would gain other sheep in large numbers and leave them disconnected, walled off from his existing flock, milling around outside the sheepfold? Even if it were a case of two distinct breeds of different quality or type of wool, the shepherd would still at least provide a sheep pen for the added breed. But are there really two breeds of Christians in any sense that would make for the unequal treatment depicted in the Watchtower picture? Notably, the artist chose a ratio of about seven sheep outside to every one inside. If the ratio were based on the more than four million witnesses now supposedly of the other sheep class as compared with the total of 144,000 of the so-called little flock, the ratio would actually be closer to 28 to 1. That would mean that if seven sheep are depicted inside the pen, there would be 196 outside, which would make the scene all the more incredible. In the first century, at Pentecost, 3,000 persons were baptized. Later, the account refers to 5,000 men as, as among those accepting the good news. In the years that followed, not only was there further growth in Jerusalem, but congregations of believers developed throughout the then known world. And historical evidence indicates that the number of those embracing the good news reached into the many tens, even hundreds of thousands. Even if we were to assume that the greater number did not prove faithful, still it is difficult to believe that there were not, at the very least, thousands who did. Since the Watchtower magazine began to be published in 1879, more tens of thousands have professed to be anointed followers of Christ, and the Watchtower certainly implies that many of these proved faithful. For the purpose of illustration, if we were to accept a very conservative figure 
of 10,000 proving faithful to death during the course of the first century, and another 10,000 from 1879 onward, that would leave, according to Watchtower Doctrine, 124,000 others to be approved during the intervening period as heavenly heirs. Consider what that would mean. It would mean that during the ensuing 1779 years before the Watchtower organization comes on the scene, Christ Jesus, who was directing his followers in accord with his words at Matthew 28:20, 20, where he, you might remember says that he's going to be with them all the days until the end of the age, Christ Jesus only saw an average of 70 persons a year in the whole world become faithful and approved followers of his. Surely it strains belief to think that such paltry results would come from Jesus' direction of his disciples, and it is demeaning to the power of the good news and the power of God's Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. 70 per year for yeah. 1,800 years. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and those are conservative figures he's using. I, I would say extremely conservative. But I think for most witnesses, the history is so foggy, you know, for, and I'm not good with numbers either, so <laughs> so I know that, you know, thinking of time flow and the number of years that have passed and the number of people on the earth at any given time, like, I think for most of them it's so vague, so foggy a notion that they don't think about all that time went by and there weren't more that were believers? Well, they get away with it because, like you say, most people just don't test it. They assume it's true. Mm -hmm. And and that's because they have other ideas that are also unique to the Watchtower that buttress, mm -hmm. they think buttress the other ideas. You're focused on other things. I was focused on Paradise Earth. Yeah, so we want to link that playlist. Uh, in, a, in a playlist we've got entitled, Who Really Are Jehovah's Witnesses? They're, the first 19 or so videos in that playlist are on the subject of what do we do with all the paradise scriptures? Mm -hmm. So check out that playlist. Uh, I think it, it'll it help you if you have witness relatives or friends uh, to be able to orient yourself around what's on their hearts. Mm -hmm. So if check out those videos. We'll put the, the whole playlist on your screen, but also the first of, of that number. Mm -hmm. And also the, a recent video we did called How Two Jehovah's Witnesses lost their faith in their own opinions, mm -hmm. which deals with John chapter 14, where we're told that the Holy Spirit will be with the church forever. So check out that one too. And next time, two foals, but one hope. Mm 